ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय शरथानाफ पुरुषा धर्म से परंत अप्राप्यम निवर्तंते मृत्यु संसार वर्तमान Those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. Purport: The faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That is the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. unfortunate people even after hearing all the evidence of vedic literature from great personalities still have no faith in god they are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the lord thus faith is a most important factor for progress in krishna consciousness in the chaitanya charitamrita it is said that faith is the complete conviction that simply by serving the supreme lord shri krishna one can achieve all perfection that is called real faith as stated in the shrimad bhagavatam yatha tororo mula nishechane na tripyanti tat skandha bhujo pashakha ha prano paharaj chayatendriyanam tathaiva sarvahana matyuteja atyuteja by giving water to the root of a tree one satisfies its branches twigs and leaves and by supplying food to the stomach one satisfies all the senses of the body similarly by engaging in the transcendental service of the supreme lord one automatically satisfies all the demigods and all other living entities therefore after reading bhagavad gita one should prop one should promptly come to the conclusion of bhagavad gita one should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the supreme lord krishna the personality of godhead if one is convinced of this philosophy of life that is faith now the development of that faith is the process of krishna consciousness there are three divisions of krishna conscious men in the third class are those who have no faith even if they are officially engaged in devotional service they cannot achieve the highest perfectional stage most probably they will slip after some time they may become engaged but because they haven't complete conviction and faith it is very difficult for them to continue in krishna consciousness we have practical experience in discharging our missionary activity that some people come and apply themselves to krishna consciousness with some hidden motive and as soon as they are economically a little well situated they give up this process and take to their old ways again it is only by faith that one can advance in krishna consciousness as far as the development of faith is concerned one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called a first class person in krishna consciousness and in the second class are those who are not very advanced in understanding the devotional scriptures but who automatically have firm faith that krishna bhakti or service to krishna is the best course and so in good faith have taken it up thus they are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith but by association and simplicity are trying to follow the third class person in krishna consciousness may fall down but when one is in the second class he does not fall down and for the first class person in krishna consciousness there is no chance of falling down one in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end as far as the third class person in krishna consciousness is concerned although he has faith in the conviction that devotional service is to krishna is very good 
He has not yet gained adequate knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Sometimes these third class persons in Krishna consciousness have some tendency toward Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga and sometimes they are disturbed. But as soon as the infection of Karma Yoga or Jnana Yoga is vanquished, they become second class or first class persons in Krishna consciousness. Faith in Krishna is also divided into three stages and described in Srimad Bhagavatam. First class attachment, second class attachment, and third class attachment are also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. Those who have no faith, even after hearing about Krishna and the excellence of devotional service, who think that it is simply eulogy, find the path very difficult, even if they are supposedly engaged in devotional service. For them there is very little hope of gaining perfection. Thus faith is very important in the discharge of devotional service. This verse is of warning for devotees, aspiring devotees. It's a scary verse should make us feel afraid. Mama They don't attain me, Krishna says. Who doesn't attain me? Ashadadhana. Those who do not have faith, they re-enter into the path of birth and death. Those who have been practicing Krishna consciousness for some time they probably know some should be up at that somehow it's not probably you all have seen some people who came for some time to Krishna consciousness and they were practicing for some time Maybe even got initiated, but nowadays you're not seeing them. They're not following. Have you seen people like that? You've been, how many years you've been practicing? Ten years. So you've seen quite a few like that, is it? Even they go all the way to get initiated, which means they take the vow to for the rest of their lives, follow these principles, chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Then after some time, then you don't see them again. Or you just see them on Janmashtami or something like that. Sometimes they even go back to eating meat. Or... So what happened? How, how is that possible? After coming to Krishna consciousness, which is so wonderful, how can people go away? Why should they go away? Well... Here Krishna says, why? Because they didn't, or they don't have full faith. It might be from the beginning they didn't really have faith. Or it might be that along the way their faith became broken. But for some reason or other, the faith that they had to follow the process of Krishna consciousness is no longer there. Or it's there in a... Their faith is not much, and therefore their Krishna consciousness is not much. They have little faith, but not so much. Prabhupada very frankly states in this purport that he's seen that people, they come to Krishna consciousness, then they become... Their financial situation improves, and they go away. Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur vidha bhajante mang jana sukriti norjuna artho jignyasur artharti jnani cha bharatarshama. Four kinds of people come to me, Krishna says. Those who are distressed, those who desire wealth, those who are inquisitive, and those who are in knowledge of my those who are knowledgeable, jnana, means those who are knowledgeable of Krishna's glories. 
So people come for different reasons. People who come for getting money, they may come to Krishna and after getting money they may say, well, thanks a lot, don't need you anymore. Mean, so what does it mean? They have faith in Krishna. To come to Krishna means to have faith in Krishna. But the faith, those who go away, it means that their, their faith was their faith was probably on the wrong premise, on the wrong grounds. People come to Krishna because artho jignasu artati. Well, there are two within these four. There are, we can divide into two groups: the artha, those who are distressed, and artharti, those who want money. So they directly want some material benefit. One wants relief from material distress by the grace of Krishna. And the other one's money. And on the other, then in another group, jignasa, they're curious, they're intellectually curious. And jnani, they have knowledge of Krishna's opulence. So people who come for some material benefit, they have faith that Krishna can fulfill my material desires. But that's not a very good platform to come to Krishna consciousness. That means that instead of approaching Krishna with love, one is approaching him in a materialistic way. Just like you might approach the chief minister or some politician. You think they're powerful? They can, they can give me some material benefit. So let me approach them and I'll get some material benefit from them. So this kind of approach to Krishna, that is, such a person is referred to in the Srimad Bhagavatam as Sabhakta Prakrita Smitaha, materialistic. The devotee, but not really devotee because they're materialistic. But they have faith. And so they take up Krishna consciousness. So they're performing the same activities practically as pure devotees. Chanting the names of the Lord, attending the temple. They may be very they may be more enthusiastic than other devotees because they they have they have faith. Oh, if I worship Krishna, I'll get lots of money. So okay, let's you know, let's be I'll be up early in the morning and chanting a lot and doing a lot of service. So they appear to be like pure devotees. But their motive is something different. And therefore, many times we see when their wish is fulfilled, they go away. Or if it's not fulfilled, because Krishna is not obliged to say, okay, now you chanted Hare Krishna for six months, here's ten lakhs of rupees. He's not obliged to fulfill your desire. And why, eh? Why, if you're going to approach Krishna for 10 lakhs, why 10 lakhs? Ask for at least 100 crores. Because for Krishna, 10 lakhs or 100 crores, it's no difference anyway. Because it's all... It's all Krishna's. And it's all, insig it's all an insignificant amount to Krishna. A thousand crores to Krishna. What is that to Krishna? He's the owner of multi-universes. So if you're going to worship Krishna for money, then you might as well worship for a thousand crores. Why for ten lakhs? Why be small time? These ladies want to come in and sit down. Do you want... Uh, Tamil translation is going on, if you want translation. But ten lakhs or a thousand crores, it's all material. It's not the real gift that Krishna has to give us. We see in, there are so many examples, this uh, Sridha, he was the devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very poor in money, but very rich in bhakti. So once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing his opulences as the Supreme Lord to all his devotees, he showed the 
Mahaishvarya Rup, full of all opulence. They said to Sridhar, what do you want? You know, you're living in poverty. Even you see the, the, the hut he's living in doesn't have a proper roof. So what do you want? I can give you what He said, I just want bhakti at your lotus feet, birth after birth. I don't want anything material. So that treasure, the treasure of bhakti, that is far more than anything material. Tyaktva turnam ashesha mandala pati shrining sada tuchavat bhutva dina ganesha ko karunaya kopina kantashrito gopi bhava rasamrita abdila hari kalola magno mahur vande rupa sanatana or raguya go sri jiva gopalako. Rup and Sanatan and the other Goswamis, they were very rich. When Rup Goswami, he resigned from the government service, he took one whole boat full of gold. That's what the money, that was his savings. How much savings do you have in your savings account? One lakh, one and a half lakhs, two lakhs. He had a whole boat full of gold. But he gave it all up as insignificant and went to live in Vrindavan with only some broken quilt, some patchwork quilt and kopin, loincloth. So why did they give up so much wealth to live so in such poverty? Because they got a greater wealth which is that they were always swimming in the nectar ocean of the gopis' feelings for Krishna. So, the wealth of Krishna Bhakti is far more than anything of this world. But foolish people approach Krishna for material wealth and he might give them some pennies. <laughs> or he might give them a lot. But that's not Krishna's real gift. But as we see, Prabhupada mentions here that some people, when they get money, they go away from bhakti. Or others, they say, well, I did bhakti for one year, two years, and still all my problems were the same. So then I left and I went to some Baba and everything was all right. So that's better means that they never understood why we should approach Krishna. So many times devotees tell me, oh, I have so many problems. Well, you don't have to tell me. I know you have so many problems. Why is that? Is that because I'm like Antaryami, I can see in your heart? It's just everyone has so many problems. It's not just... You, everyone is thinking, oh, I have so many problems. Everyone has so many problems. And however many problems you have, you can be sure that there are plenty of other people with plenty more problems than you. So, you have many problems. Then you come to a sadhu, and I have so many problems, please help me to solve them. But... That's the nature of this material world. Even if by sadhu's blessings you get free of problems, then more blessings, more problems will come. Because that's the material world. It's foolishness to think that we will get free from all problems while living in this material world. It's not only foolish, it's, it's practically demoniac to think that we shall enjoy this material world without surrendering to Krishna. So if we have many problems, very good. You have problems? Good. Now consider why. Why do you have problems? Because you, sir, are a rascal. You came to this material world, not only you, me too, and all of us. We came to this material world to forget Krishna. Therefore we're suffering in this material world. Purusha sukhadu kanam bhuktritve hitu ruchyate we are the cause of our own material so-called happiness and our material distress. So, the idea that we shall go to God and get free from all our problems, well, that's true, but we'll get free from the problems. How? By sarvadhaman paritta jamame kamsharanam braja 
Ahang twang sarva pape bio moksha yashami masucha. We'll get free from all our sinful reactions by surrendering to Krishna. And even that doesn't mean that all the problems will solve. That means that as long as we're in this world, there will be difficulties. But by surrendering to Krishna, we get free from birth and death. We get free from the mentality of being an enjoyer separately from Krishna. That is our problem. We say we have so many problems. Actually, we don't have so many problems. We only have one problem, and that's that we're not surrendered to Krishna. Or if you want to make it two problems, then we can say that we're not only we're not surrendered to Krishna, but we don't even recognize that our problem is that we're not surrendered to Krishna. And these one plus one problem expands into unlimited problems but we don't recognize what the real problem is. And we're thinking that Krishna, we'll approach Krishna and he will solve all these other problems, but we don't want to solve the basic problem is that we're envious of Krishna. So we're asking Krishna to, by helping, by asking Krishna to solve all our problems without desiring to surrender to him, it's, we're... It's like, you know, you have lung cancer and you go to the doctor and say, you know, cure my lung cancer and I'll go on smoking. We have to stop smoking. And the, the, the cause is the smoking. And you want to get free from the lung cancer and go on smoking. But is it possible? Yeah, the, the cause has to be seen. You want, you want to ask Krishna to help you. It's, it's, it's like going to the... Uh, it's like going to the chief of police and saying that, you know, help me in my... Don't put me in prison, but I'll do the crime. It's like trying to bribe the police. Their job is to catch you. But you bribe them and then there you think, of course you can do that in this material world. That The biggest criminals and the police, they're hand in hand. Not only in India, in other countries also. It's, they say there's a major drug problem all over the world and the, the American police, they're so stupid, they can't catch all. The, the same people are selling drugs for years and years and they can't catch them. They have space satellites that can, they can read the coin, what's written on the coin on the street 5,000 miles away from America and they can't find tons and tons of cocaine coming into America. So, I'm just asking the question. I'm doubtful if they're serious to stop this. So, in this world, you can, you can pay off the police and go on with your crime. So, we might think Krishna is something like this, that you solve all my problems and I'll go on sinning. I'll go on forgetting. We'll make him a partner in our crime. That you, you make all facilities for me to enjoy this material world and I'll do some superficial worship of you and I won't surrender to you and I'll be happy. But Krishna has set up this material world to punish us. That is his kindness. We say, God should be kind to me. I'm, I'm suffering so much. I've got this disease and that disease and debts and so many things. And why isn't God kind to me? He is kind. That is His kindness. I have so many problems. Oh, you're very fortunate. Now you should consider why you have so many problems. We have so many problems because we're not Krishna conscious. So then people take to Krishna consciousness and think, I'll get. I'll, this is a process to get free from the problems. But they don't want to make the core change of heart that I have to surrender to Krishna and recognize that He is the Supreme Lord and I am His servant. But instead we want to enjoy this material world separately from Him and therefore even if we superficially take up bhakti because we never really entered into bhakti. We never had faith. 
uh, we, we were never convinced that we are meant to surrender to Krishna. Therefore, all our chanting and service and enthusiasm, it's not really bhakti. It's, it's a means to try to bribe Krishna to fulfilling our desire. The same thing, you see, someone may have a lot of guru bhakti because they're thinking, well, the guru has a lot of power. He's doing so much tapasya, so let me get some blessing from him to fulfill my material desires. So we have to see who's serious in Krishna consciousness over the years. It's not just... In the beginning, someone may be very enthusiastic but we have to see if they maintain that. Why are they enthusiastic? What is their, what is their motive? Our motive, this point Prabhupada is making in the purport, our motive, that is essential in devotional service, that we, we see our motive is pure. Our motive is to satisfy Krishna. Now in the beginning it's not pure. Mostly because artho, jignasur, artarti, those who are desirous of money or becoming free from material distress, or those who are simply intellectually inquisitive, their motive in the beginning in coming to Krishna is not pure. But that should change, as Prabhupada mentions here, faith develops by association with devotees. Now, devotee, what is the meaning of this term? We see people talk about the Ayapa devotees. At the uh, at Udupi, there's a sign, that the Madhva Sarova, in front of the Krishna Matam, that Ayapa devotees should not bath in this should not bath in this pond but what does it mean Devo devotee means devoted and devotion means not just a show but actually one accepts that person as the master unconditional so that is only possible in relationship with Krishna there's no Shuddha Bhakti in relationship with others. Sometimes people ask, well, we see some people, they're, they're Shuddha Bhaktas of Shiva. They have that attitude towards Shiva, that they, they just want to serve without any reward. There's some, maybe some school of Shaivism like that, but it's not possible because it's misplaced in relationship with Shiva because he is not the object of acceptance of unmotivated bhakti. He is not param brahma, param dhamma, pavitram, param ambhava. He is not the Supreme Lord. He is exalted, but he is not on the same level as Krishna. Yastu narayanam devam brahma rudra didaivatai samatve naiva vikshita sapashandi bhavedruvam. One who thinks even Shiva or Brahma to be on the same level as Narayana is a Pashandi, an atheist. So, even if one is superficially cultivating such an attitude, it is not possible to have pure, unmotivated bhakti for Shiva or for anyone else because bhakti is meant for Krishna. And one can have bhakti for Shiva seeing him as a devotee of Krishna, but that's, that's only a part of Krishna Bhakti. There's no such thing as Shiva Bhakti independent of Krishna Bhakti. There is no Bhakti independent of Krishna Bhakti because Krishna is the only actual object of bhajan, of worship. So by associating with devotees, one should come to understand this. If one is enthusiastic to serve Krishna, that is very good. This temple is being constructed here with donations mostly from materialistic people. 
who think that by offering some money for the, for building a temple, I will get some materialistic pious result. People have that charitable attitude. We have to encourage it also. They mostly don't come offering themselves. We have to encourage that. But they have that pious attitude because they think that, well, in doing business, I may be doing so many things which are not pious. Business means, especially in the modern age, there has to be cheating, lying, so many things. So let me be freed from that reaction by giving some donation for building the temple. Or they think that by giving this donation, then God will protect me and my family and my business. And like this, they, they desire some pious result. But the devotees, they should give their association to pious people by informing them that, yes, it's good that you donate to the temple, but you should understand that there is a higher platform than that of punya, the platform of surrender to Krishna. This is the purpose of building this temple. There are already so many temples. This temple is not meant to be another business venture in which... You build the temple, the people come, they give money, and the priests live very happily. <clears throat> they have enough income. It's not meant for that. This temple is meant for preaching Dukalayama Shashvatam. This material world is miserable. Therefore, in our own real self interest, is Sarvadhaman Parittaja, Mame Kam Sharnam Raja to surrender wholly, solely, exclusively, without any reservations, at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, giving up all other so-called religions and so, so many other motivations. So a pious person may come to Krishna Bhakti, he will come with some material uh, objective, but... By associating with devotees, he should become purified. And actually, taking initiate, one should take initiation really only if he has this understanding that I'm doing this not for any material benefit, but I'm doing it for, for the sake of surrendering to Krishna. This Diksha, to put, actually at the time of Diksha, one starts to apply Tilak. That's the traditional system. So that one is stamped like an animal. An animal has the stamp. You belong to this master. So the Tilak is stamped. Now you are, this is the foot of Vishnu. That's representative. That now we are the slave of Vishnu. We have subordination, Sharanagati. We're on the we're on the path of Sharanagati, full surrender to Krishna. So that should be understood. If one is still thinking that I'm doing this for some material motive, then such a person, even if they're chanting 16 rounds of the Maha Mantra and four regulated principles, they're not really fit to be initiated. Because divyam jnanam yato dadyat Purapa pasya sangshayam. Diksha means mm, the, uh, the process by which one gets, one attains spiritual knowledge and subsequently becomes free from all sinful reactions. But if one is cultivating material desires, that means he's cultivating the propensity for making more sinful reactions. So, one should be convinced that you want there should be arati. You shouldn't speak anymore. All right. You want the arati, so you can go and put the collection plate and get some more collection. Hearing, if people hear... Mostly people think they'll get more benefit by seeing the arati. They'll get more benefit by hearing. 
So you can do the arati, but the hearing should go on. Even if they don't see the arati, if they hear, that will be more beneficial. Until you understand that, you're not fit to be initiated. Just exactly what I'm talking, divyam jnana. One should attain spiritual knowledge. Whereas the neophyte devotee thinks, I will watch, I will watch the arati. And hearing all this, they also say, yes, I'll sit and I'll listen. And why listen? Because I'll get some benefit. Then God will help me. It's a pious activity. But listening, actually listening, that it should vidyate hridya grantihi, it should cut the knot of the heart, that they're not interested in. Therefore it doesn't cut. They don't hear. It's all very superficial. One, one should be initiated when one comes to the standard of shravana dasha. One is, one is fit for hearing. Unless one is fit for hearing, then he's not fit to be initiated because he, initiation means you hear from the guru. And the Guru speaks, Vidyate Hridya Gantihi, Chidyante Sarva Sangshayaha, to cut the knot of material attachments on the heart and clear all doubts. So, that has to be seen. What is our motivation? Otherwise, we see sometimes devotees, they're very enthusiastic. Because they have faith that Krishna will help me in my material life. There are so many examples. It's cheating. They take, they take Krishna consciousness as another kind of cheating. They can, they can employ Krishna as their servant so that they can go on with their business of enjoying this material world. That is called cheating religion. Dharma projita. Kaitava Atra, Srimad Bhagavatam begins with rejecting cheating religion. But people of different outlook, they take that, oh, this is a very good opportunity to cheat. You see, these people are very straightforward, so straightforward people, they're very easy to cheat. They think like that, but they don't know that Krishna is the biggest cheater. Therefore, Krishna says, Ashadadhana purusha dharma syasya parantapa aprapya mangde vartante mrityu samsara vartmane. That if you don't have faith, if you don't really want to accept me, if you're simply making a show, then I don't accept you. Then you go back. You want it? Material life? All right, you take your 10 lakhs, 100 lakhs thousand crores you take and go back and become a worm in stool in your next life. Krishna, if you want, you'll give that opportunity. There are so many people coming that enthusiastically serving one so-called disciple of mine was very enthusiastically serving and not making much money but doing some small business and I suggested that well, maybe you could, you could sell Prabhupada's books. You could go to different temples and sell the books. You could maintain yourself like that and at the same time do some preaching side by side. So after some time I, I saw him and he came and he started telling me all excitedly like, you know, I, I got a new piece of land and I'm going to make so much money out. I got it very cheap and... I say, what's he telling me all this for? You know, does he think I'm because I gave him some suggestion how he could him, he could make some he could do business by selling Prabhupada's books? He thinks I mean, I think that my motive was to make him a rich businessman. And then he says, I got this plot of land. I said, what for? And then he started thinking, whoops, wait a minute, oh, for a temple. So I said, okay, so give it in Iskon's name. Uh, <clears throat> How many rounds are you chanting? Uh, not 60. 
So he thought I would be enthusiastic. He was very enthusiastic. I'm making lots of money. And I bought some land. And but where? Should I be enthusiastic? I'm supposed to be enthusiastic about that? And not chanting. Before he was chanting and serving humbly. Now his enthusiasm for that is gone. He's become very enthusiastic. I found some way to make some money. How are you, I asked, how are you making so much money? By preaching. What kind of preaching? Selling rudrakshas. And this preaching? Oh, I, and Bhagavad Gita is also. So cheating. Cheating mentality. But will he cheat Krishna? Or someone comes and he's, you know, he's got a girlfriend, never mind his wife. But I, you know, she's becoming a devotee. Rascal. He's trying to, trying to convince me this is very good because she's become, becoming a devotee like you, learning how to engage in illicit sex. And he's thinking, I should give the blessing. The guru will give blessing to you, whatever rascaldom you do, and in the name of bhakti. And this idea that you, you do whatever you like and you, put it, you have a bead bag and you say, Jai Guru Dev. And give him a thousand rupees. And then, all right, he'll give the blessing. I'm very fortunate that Lord Krishna directed me to a guru who didn't cheat others like that. We should be grateful that Prabhupada, he was very clear. We are here to serve Krishna. Not to serve our mind and our senses and our body. He didn't uh, compromise for the sake of getting money and followers. Even here in Chennai, of course, at that time in Jambakam wasn't Chennai. It was a, it was a field a long way outside. But in those days, Chennai, when Prabhupada was there. Some, uh, some, who was that? He was chief justice or something, some big person brought Prabhupada to his house and said that you please speak to us about Ras Leela. Some big man. He had deities of Radha and Krishna in his house. And Prabhupada explained that no, this is not just for speaking to everyone. That anyone just comes to talk Ras Leela. No, this is very. This is only for most advanced devotees. And he said, "Yes, yes, we are most advanced." Prabhupada said, "You may be, but I am not qualified to speak to you. I am not advanced." So he didn't go along with their nonsense. He was quite clear that this is cheating to think that you, with all your material attachments, you shall listen to Ras Lila. So they may have lost their faith in Prabhupada. Oh, he's not on such a high level. He doesn't want to speak to Ra- about Rasulullah. Of course, Prabhupada wants to speak, but not to you. You're not fit. But that they won't accept. They, they have faith that I'm already advanced. Then you don't need to go to a guru. If you're already advanced, if you, do, if you don't want to hear what he has to say, if you think, I, I already know everything and he just gives some blessing, then what is the purpose? What is the point? That means we have faith in, our, in ourselves, but we, don't, we haven't actually taken up the point that I need to surrender to Krishna. So such persons, they go away and they blame the devotees. The, the, the devotees, they're not up to the proper standard. So here Krishna is talking about faith. But what is that faith? That faith is in, not faith that Krishna, he will fill our material desires. But here when Krishna says, those who do not have faith, it means they do not have faith in the process of pure devotional service, of pure surrender to Krishna. So such persons go away because actually they never really came. They were never really there in the first place. They only appeared to be performing devotional service. But they're not because their aim is to take advantage of this process for their own 
material aggrandizement. So it's understood that not everyone can immediately surrender. That's why there is the process of bhakti yoga. But we have to, if we are actually going to come to Krishna and not fall away, then we have to clearly have the goal of surrendering to Krishna. If we don't have that aim, then we will say that, yes, yes, I want to surrender to Krishna. But actually we have some other aim. Or we, 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 what we call surrender to Krishna is our own cheating program for indulging our mind and senses and body. So what do we want? What are we praying to Krishna for? Are we praying na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim? Are we praying na dhanam, but maybe just a little bit? Or na, na dhanam, but I don't want for myself, but I'm doing this business, I'm making lots of money, or I'm earning so much money, but it's not for me, it's for, in, it's for devotional service, you see. So we... Or I'm building this big house, and it's, it's not for me, you see. I'm just living there, but the main point is to do bhakti. So it's self-cheating. Don't be self-cheating, otherwise we won't get bhakti. We should know that the process of devotional service is for our purification. We've come here for purification. Don't try to take shortcuts. We may think, oh, let me find a guru who lets me do whatever I like. No rules, no regulations. And you just bribe him, give him a hundred rupees, smile at him, say, Jai Guru Dev. Uh, yeah, this kind of guru is very nice. But I don't want any guru who tells me, you know, you have to give up this and give up that. and Stop watching TV and stop eating kami food. And so anyway, I'll get initiated by someone who lets me... Do I have the maximum sense gratification and get pure Krishna praying also? This is cheating mentality. So, faith means faith in the process of devotional service. Sarvam etadritam manye yang mang vadisikeshava. What Krishna tells us, we have to have faith in that. We can't dilute it or pollute it or readjust it to our own ideas. We have to, ourselves, we have to see that we need adjusting. There's something wrong with us. We need to take up the instructions of Guru, Sadhu, Shastra. Not that we have our own program and we'll, we'll take the benefit that is there from Krishna consciousness and use it for our own program. That's not bhakti. It never can be defined as bhakti. Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu has very clearly defined what is bhakti and he's differentiated that from show of bhakti in which someone may be dancing very ecstatically but when the dancing finishes the sense gratification begins. I've seen in Bangladesh, it's just shameless how the, the, the paid kirtan groups, because people think, people have faith that kirtan is very auspicious. It's the yagya for this age, so we'll, do, we'll organize a yagya. So we call in professional groups, and they sing, with a, they're very musical, and they, show, they dance up and down with a lot of ecstasy, they only do that in the evening when there's a big crowd. During the day, when there's just if you know a few retired old people, then they don't they don't bother jumping around. But at night when there's a big crowd, they have to put on more of a show. So they're jumping up and down, a lot of ecstasy, Hare Krishna, falling on the ground sometimes in ecstasy of praying. And then the, their time is up. You see, they're only they only do two hours or so at a time. Then the next group comes. If the next group's late, they start to get upset. You know, what's going on? We're not getting paid for this. Time's up and, you know, it's two hours I didn't smoke a biddy. So, 
Then they rush off the stage and immediately someone's there to offer Bidi Seva. You see? To the Vaishnava. You have to serve the Vaishnavas. Just open cheating. What is the ecstasy? Just a show. So, in this part of the world, we don't have such a developed Vaishnav culture yet where the, the cheating is so much ingrained. But uh, we have to see, what have we come to Krishna for? Are we going to remain on the path of Krishna consciousness? Are we actually on the path of Krishna consciousness? Do we want to surrender to Krishna? There are so many deviations, artificial ecstasy, we, do, we like to discuss so many things about Krishna's intimate leaders. Or Krishna consciousness can be used as an excuse for giving up our material responsibilities. I don't need to look after my children, they're just maya. I'm going to go and do guru seva. Forget the children. So many ways we are deviating. Therefore we have to learn what is Krishna consciousness? Exactly as Shastra and Acharyas have given to us. And follow that with the motive of becoming free from all material attachments and surrendering to Krishna. Not that in the name of Krishna consciousness we cultivate more material attachments. Oh, I'm, I got a girlfriend and I'm making her Krishna conscious. Or... I'm making lots of money, but it's all for Krishna. That's what everyone says. You go to all the businessmen, they'll all quote, what is this? Karmanye vadi karasta. You, you have a, see, I'm just working, I'm not attached. You see, I'm making lots of money and I'm not attached. I'm making crores of rupees. You see, I'm not attached. Here's a hundred rupees for you. You see, proof. I'm not attached. I'm also a life member. So, so giving up material attachment. Who likes to discuss? If we discuss this more, less people will stay. If we discuss all nice Krishna leelas, Krishna stealing the butter, sing a few songs, oh, so many people will come. And if we say that you have to give up material attachments, they'll all go away. So what does that mean? They're attached to Krishna? No. They're attached to hearing some entertainment in the name of being Krishna conscious. Otherwise, they should like to hear how we can become free from material attachment so that we can actually appreciate Krishna. But they think, oh, we're already appreciating Krishna, so what is the need to give up material attachments? But that is not actual appreciation. Because if there is actual appreciation, then there won't be material attachments. So either they pretend that the material attachments are not material, that they're actually spiritual, or some other way, they try to cheat. But this means that the actual seed of Krishna Bhakti never took place in the heart. And such a person can never actually develop in Krishna consciousness. It may seem that they're developing, but they're not developing because they're cultivating material attachments in the name of Krishna consciousness. So actually, we have to become free from the desire for gratifying the tongue, the belly, the genitals, from home, what is that? Putra, Dara, Griha, Dishu. From home, family, all these different things. I'm, you know, see, our, our great country, Mera Bharat Mahan, all these material attachments, they have to be given up. And how intelligently, sometimes in the name of giving up material attachments, we also are cultivating material attachments. Because we think, well, my family life is too much trouble, so I'll, now I'm going to become a sannyasi. And I, so I'll give up my responsibility for the sake of bhakti. But it's not for the sake of bhakti, because if your family life is so much trouble, but we're not giving it up for the sake of bhakti, just because it's troublesome. And if you, know, you win the lottery, which devotees don't indulge in anyway, and you got a crore of rupees, and then, oh, and, well, family life's okay. I don't think I'm going to give up. I'm just going to take sannyas, and, oh, here's a crore of rupees. Okay, well, sannyas later. <laughs> so, 
so-called, I've seen people that I'm now I'm giving up all my material attachments as if they're so detached. But they're not detached. It's just that they're, they want material sense enjoyment, but they're finding their present situation is not conducive for, for sense gratification. So in the name of bhakti, they give up that situation, and within a short time they'll accept another situation which they find is more conducive for their spiritual advance, for their material advancement. And then they'll say, well, yes, you know, I, I renounce, but actually I can understand it's better for me to be, you know, better for me to be in the material situation. Then why did you give up the previous one? So, so much nonsense is going on. In the name of bhakti, this should be given up. One should be serious, sincere, open, frank, honest, that yes, I am a conditioned soul. I'm not a pure devotee, but I wish to become a pure devotee. Therefore, I have to accept the path of pure devotional service in all seriousness so that I can come to that stage. But if we're thinking that, yes, well, I'll be a pure devotee and I'll be a great material success also and for preaching. You see, I'll become a great doctor and a great scientist and a great businessman and all for the sake of preaching. But... If you're cultivating the desire to become a great doctor, then you have to give your life to becoming a... You can't become a part-time great doctor. Great doctor means he's 18 hours a day, every day. That, that's... You have to... If you want to be great anything in this material world, of course, anyone who wants to be great is or simply a great fool anyway. But you have to dedicate yourself. You can't become a successful businessman as a part-time job. So you have to, you want to become a success in your company, then you have to work hard and put in overtime. Then where's the time for bhakti? And you may say, well, people will be attracted when they see that I'm also a devotee and a material success. But, but, where, but where's your devotion? Simply, uh, you have some, you go to the temple once a week and on the way to work, in between talking on your cell phone and driving, you click a few, click, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and then you talk on your cell and that's bhakti. And where's the bhakti? You have to have time. To cultivate bhakti requires time. You, if you give all your time to becoming a so-called material success, then you don't have time for bhakti. So people will criticize, oh, this, this movement is spoiling our chances of material success. Yes, quite likely. Very good. Don't try to be a material success. So you, you, and then you'll have to find a guru who says, yes, be a material success. You go get cheated. But if you want bhakti, then you have to spend time. You have to chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds. It takes time. You can't finish it in 53.2 minutes. It takes more time. You have to spend time reading Prabhupada's books. You have to spend time studying Shastra. You have to spend time doing service. So... If you want to be a material success, then you won't have time for bhakti. That's a fact. So, what's the point anyway? What is the use of being a so-called material success? Being successful in the eyes of foolish people who judge success in terms of money, position, material qualifications. What is the use? It, and in the beginning of bhakti, one should understand that this is simply foolishness. If we don't understand this, then what, what are we doing? We're, we're quoting Bhagavad Gita shlokas, we don't understand a single word. If we don't understand, Dukhalayama Shashvatam. And we're thinking, yes, I'll be happy in this material world. Where is the happiness? We don't understand. We don't accept. Sarvam etam ritam, sarvam etad ritam manye. Yang Mang Vadasi Keshwa. We don't accept what Krishna says. We take it as a as a means to get some to the, some peace of mind while we go on with our program for improving ourselves materially. Just like you see, like there's this all this art of what is that art of something, and all this they all they're all teaching that you be a material success and you do a little yoga and chant some mantras and keep the picture of this fellow with the beard on your fridge and give him 2,000 rupees for going to some seminar and make him rich. And uh, you see, and 
you be a material success and you this art of something or other and you become you get freedom from stress and all this all cheating krishna consciousness is not meant to be another kind of cheating in which you go on with becoming a foolish idea of becoming a material success and getting some relief from the distress which comes from trying to be a material success by chanting hari krishna is not meant for that it's not meant to be a palliative for our for the distress incurred by increasing our material foolishness it's meant to be for becoming free from foolishness and there are many people who say don't listen to that that's foolishness be, be happy in this material world and chant hari krishna then later you see later it's all right what maharaj said is very true but later you see when you are 97 years old then you can be you take it up like that you see he's a sanyasi he doesn't understand all these grihastas you see so we you should, he's not very understanding understanding means you should understand what krishna says not what someone who has some other program apart from krishna we all have different programs if we have the say if we have the program that krishna has given us then we can go to krishna if we have some other program then aprapya mam nivartante mrityu samsara bhagavan then we don't go to krishna it's quite clear so what do we want sometimes you say who wants krishna prem everyone hari ram then we say who wants to give up eating chocolates no one says hari ram and you're going to get krishna prem by indulging in sense gratification it this is simply nonsense we'll go on with all our material attachments and watching tv and eating karmi for everything and hari bol prem don't cheat ourselves let's see what is the process that we have to chant hari krishna give up material attachments and take the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu by which krishna prem is attained by following the process as given in bhakti rasamrita sindhu given by the acharyas otherwise you can talk prem 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 and there'll never be prem unless we follow the standard process meant for overcoming material attachments and giving up sense gratification is there any question please no question time for arati all right have arati the deity is better because he doesn't speak <laughs> yeah mic mic give the mic we have a... all right speak and i'll repeat the question Worship of Ganesh is recommended. Yeah, that's stated in the nectar of devotion. Our recent acharyas have given the process of worshiping the acharyas to become free from obstacles in the path of bhakti. Actually, Ganesh is worshipped for giving for overcoming material obstacles, which may also occur in bhakti. there may be some material obstacles to the to the just like in procuring ingredients or for arati or for, for overcoming inauspiciousness but for overcoming the real obstacles to our bhakti which is our kam krodh lobh moha madha matsarya then we have to worship the acharyas and by worshiping the acharyas then worship of the demigods is included